What's going on, everyone? I'm back again, and as always, what you're supposed to do, place your cross on first. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is like a continuation of the video I did earlier about telling your kids the truth about life and about death and using scripture, scripture to explain things. We got to use scripture to explain a lot of things because we're trying to lead people to God, not away from God, not away to other belief systems or mindsets or anything like that. You see, the Bible even tell us to avoid questions about genealogy, science, all types of things, people. So we are taught to be vigilant and be truthful in what we spread. Because all it takes is one misstep in regards to the word of God, and it can change the whole meaning of it. And like I was reading yesterday in Timothy, there are some people that spread the word of God, the God and spreading it wrong. There's many people that do it, and I pray to God that I'm not. If I am, correct me. There's nothing wrong with correcting me. You know what I'm saying? There's no, nothing wrong with correcting anybody. But like I said, if the person knows what they're talking about, it's going to be pretty hard to correct them. But no man is void of correction. I'm not void of correction. I'm sure since I've been making videos, I probably said some things that were probably wrong or I didn't truly understand what I was explaining when I started doing this, but I understand a little bit better now. And I know the, what I discussed earlier, a lot of people are not going to agree with me on that. I'm not going to agree with scripture on that. That no lies of God. You know, like, and it's kids. You got to understand, a kid's mind, a child, is very sensitive. I remember uh, when, I, when my daughter was younger and her grandmother used to tell her that a lot of these things on TV, like cartoons, and that is real. And she was believing it. And I had to break it down. No, <laughs> this is fake. This is not real. Uh, you understand? And that's what you got to do in regards to pagan holidays, pagan belief. You got to tell people the difference between these things. Like, my mom told me a lot of stuff growing up. You knew. I'm going to tell you all the truth. I knew about God and I knew about voodoo and witchcraft. But my mom used to tell me about people doing such things. But she never ran into detail. Like, things to watch out for and this and that. You know, but that's why I'm trying to change the way I was taught. And you should be trying to change the way you are taught. You don't want to keep your kids in the dark about nothing in regards to scripture. Like, don't get in your mindset, I'm going to wait till they're a little older for this. Let me tell you something, people. If you wait too long, the world is going to teach them. The world is going to teach them. Especially in this day and age. We send our kids to school. And they teach them all these different genders. So when they come home... You got to tell them, hey, it's two genders. You got to go against the grain. And a lot of people don't want to go against the grain as children of God. And we got to stop doing that. We got to stop trying to be people pleasers. Oh, I, I know there's no such thing as your ancestors watching over you. But I'm going to say it anyway because it sounds good because you just lost somebody you love. And that's what we do a lot of times. We want to comfort someone with lies. God has, has never comforted us with a lie through his whole Bible. He don't comfort us with lies. We know that there are lying spirits out there that lie to folks, but God is no lie. There is no lie that's of God, period. So if you use this as the forefront of your faith, you'll change a lot of things you tell people. Because like I, I was talking about this earlier, I watched Swamp People. It's like they try to water things down. Like in the same episode, they had some people worshiping their ancestors. And they had one group go to church. And they would not say God. They would not say Jesus. That's just like they had to talk to a higher power. Look how TV likes to dumb down Jesus Christ. And then in the same episode, they had two people. One person went to pray to their ancestors. And they caught fish. Then you had people that go over here and pray to God. 
I mean, and they caught gators, and they caught gators. And you like, this is very confusing because a person that's watching that gonna look at like, well, if they can call on their ancestors, <laughs> I can too and get blessed. But I'm gonna tell you, the devil is a deceiver. And something my brother told me years ago, and it still resurrects with me today. The devil likes to give gifts to you. And a lot of people don't think that. All you gotta do is go back to the um the temptation of Christ. What he told, what he told uh Jesus. He took him on the top of the mountain. He said, I give you all this if you worship me. So don't think that the devil, the ruler of the prince of this world, does not give his kids, his children, the people that or consider him their father things. They do. That's why you can't look at everybody who has money as, well, oh, they must love God. And you can't look at everybody that's broke as if they love God. You got to get to know folks. You got to not judge a book by its cover. Because I'm going to tell you why, people. There are witches in the churches and there are good people in the churches. I mean, righteous people who fear God. There are righteous people in the world and there are wicked people in the world. You can't just because you wear a cross around your neck. And guess what? Everybody on that show I watch wear a cross. And then at the same time, they'll spread folklore. Pay attention to when you watch shows and stuff like that. They reference Mother Nature. Then they be like, God is good. What? what is that a God is good or Mother Nature is good? Which one is it? That's confusing, and God is not the author of confusion in any way, shape, or form. The devil is the author of confusion. The devil is the author of lies. And you have to realize this as a Christian. So don't confuse your kids. Let's think about every Christmas. Parents, Christian so-called parents, got to explain Santa Claus and explain the birth of Jesus in a way that's not truthful. Ain't that crazy? Don't you think? They got to explain it in a way like, okay, kids, I know Jesus was not born. Now, if you got to say that, if you got to come out your mouth with, I know Jesus wasn't born on Christmas. Now, imagine explaining that to your kids. I know Jesus wasn't born on Christmas, but this is when we choose to celebrate his birth. Now, Come on now. You think God is okay with that? A lie in regards to his birthday. And the thing is, Jesus has been around since day one. What's his original birthday? You don't know. You know, if you look at the biblical perspective, Jesus coming back on the earth is like, the born again process right before your eyes. If you look at it from a spiritual perspective. But people be careful. You know, I'm not trying to tell you something to, to make you upset your kids or something like that, but I'm just going to tell you the truth. The more you tell them the truth, the better it is. You ain't got to wait till they're 13 to explain, hey, all these years, I've been wrapping your gifts and giving credit to Santa Claus. Ain't that a lie? And you think it's cool because it's cool. You think it's just a good thing to lie to your kids. You know, it, it took me a while to be like, tell my kids that hey, you know, y'all know I don't do Christmas now. Y'all know I don't really do holidays. It, it took some time to do that. It wasn't like I gave my life to God and be like, I'm getting rid of Christmas today. No, it took time. It took studying. It took reading. It took conviction. It took practice. What's the old saying? Practice make perfect. But if you keep, what if you keep practicing lies? You perfecting lies. And that's what the world we live in. All you gotta do is ask yourself a question. What about those people in Asia and Thailand and countries that don't even fear God and they celebrate Christmas too with Santa Claus? How do you explain that to your kids? Do you understand people? Be truthful with the word of God. Be truthful to one another. Even God said, if you do something and you wrong someone or you commit a sin against somebody to go to them and tell them the truth. 
That's how a lot of marriages and relationships fail because nobody just won't tell the truth. No, I ain't never cheat on you. Lying through their teeth. When as a man or a woman of God, if you mess up, you're supposed to be like, you know what? I slept with someone else. It's up to you forgive me or not. But I got to tell you the truth. Just imagine if the world was really based on truths. For real, the world would be so much better. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ever heard that before? <laughs> but that's all I'm trying to tell y'all people, man. Tell the truth. You know, I learned that early on in life. And one of the biggest deceptions in this world that people overlook, they'll talk about people getting drunk. They'll talk about fornicators. They'll talk about adulterers. They'll talk about pedophiles. They'll talk about murderers. But when it comes to liars, they branch that part off when the Bible clearly says liars will be appointed their portion in the lake of fire with non-believers or unbelievers. So what makes you think because you're a Christian, it gives you the right to lie to your kids or anybody else, people? Think about it. Does that make sense as a child of God? Let me pause and I will continue.